Easter, we celebrate the empty tomb. But what if, what if it wasn't empty? What if Jesus never really came back to life? You may recall a few Easter's ago, just a couple of Easter's ago, they found the Jesus ossuary, the bone box, with the supposed name of Jesus on it, and claimed that it was the Messiah, the Jewish Messiah. What if that was really the place where his bones were? What if his body had decayed in the tomb, and then they placed his bones in that box and put his name on it? How would that affect Christianity? What would be the implications in your life and for our faith? For the church, what would, how would that impact your entire being? What things would be different? Well, if tomb was not empty, then life is empty. If Jesus wasn't resurrected, then all life, especially the Christian life, is meaningless. For our lives to be filled with meaning, the tomb had to be empty of Christ's corpse. The tomb had to be empty for us and our lives to be full. Something in this world is empty. It's either the tomb or it's our lives and the meaning of life. This is essentially what Paul is saying in 1 Corinthians 15. Listen again as I read it. 1 Corinthians 15, 12. If Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? Some people in Corinth were denying that there was a physical, bodily resurrection. They were thinking in spiritual terms. But Paul is saying no. There was a physical resurrection. But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ. And we did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. And those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope only for this life, we are, of all people, the most pitiful. But, in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. If the tomb was empty, then life, if the tomb was not empty, then life is empty, meaningless, without purpose. Paul starts off by saying that if Christ was not raised from the dead, then Christian preaching is useless. He lists several things and builds upon them about the uselessness of life without Christ's resurrection. If Christ was not raised from the dead, then the first thing that Paul mentions is that this preaching that's happening right here, right now, it's useless. All gospel preaching, that pro all gospel preaching proclaims Christ's death and his resurrection. And if Christ hasn't been raised, then Christian preaching is useless, a wasted endeavor. You should go back home Sleep in on Sunday mornings. You're going to get more out of life if you do that. The Christ is not raised. The message that all apostles throughout the New Testament hold in common, the thing that every single apostle preaches and teaches, is this one thing in common. Jesus died, he was buried, and he came back to life. All the apostles taught that same thing. In fact, all true Christians teach that same thing, believe that same thing. All true pastors preach that same message. All true churches hold to that teaching. Jesus died, he was buried, and he came back to life. Jesus' death is the key to all that we believe. It's the key to our salvation because it's in that death that Jesus pays for our sins. But his resurrection is important because it's the thing that proves that Jesus paid for our sins. His resurrection is the proof of the efficiency, the efficacy, the, the working of his death. Jesus came back to life as testimony 
that everything that he did and said was true. Listen to Romans 1, 4. Jesus Christ, our Lord, was declared to be the Son of God. How was he declared to be the Son of God? Well, by nature of his resurrection from the dead. Jesus was declared to be the Son of God in power according to the Spirit of Holiness by his resurrection from the dead. It was that resurrection that declares him to be who he was. John MacArthur, a well-known uh, minister today, says it this way. The resurrection is validation by God of his saving work. If Jesus did rise, then Jesus is not the Son of God. He is not the Savior. He hasn't purchased our redemption. His sacrifice has not been accepted by God. His work was not accomplished. There is no good news to preach. So Christian preaching is useless. If he didn't rise, then there's no sense in preaching about his resurrection. There's no sense in preaching about his death. Because if he didn't rise, death is all there is. There is no divine validation because there is no resurrection. All gospel preaching then is empty and useless. It's a sham. It's a hoax. There's no good news. Jesus did not accomplish our redemption. He did not conquer sin, death, and hell. The angels lied when they announced his birth, saying, Behold, I bring you good news of great joy. The news is all bad. Just another failure. If Jesus didn't die and rise from the dead, if he didn't rise from the dead, then gospel preaching is useless. Christian preaching is useless. You think that's bad? But wait, it gets worse. If Jesus didn't come back to life, not only is preaching useless, but the apostles are all a bunch of liars. Paul says this in our passage. We, the apostles, are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. So think about the implications of that. All the apostles preached the resurrection, every one of them. If Jesus wasn't resurrected, then that makes the apostles liars. And if they are liars, think about who wrote the New Testament. These same men. The apostles wrote the New Testament, and the Bible was written by a bunch of perjurers bearing false witness. Jesus did not come back to life. If Jesus did not come back to life, then the Bible was written by a bunch of liars. And you can't trust it. All the promises of the Bible are now in doubt. All the stories of Paul's missing journeys are in question. They're fiction. All the miracles are fairy tales. All the hope that the New Testament offers is false hope. It is a book of lies. The resurrection of Christ is the central theme throughout the entire New Testament. The New Testament stands or falls on this one thing. Jesus' resurrection. Without the resurrection, the integrity of the New Testament is capitalized and the message is obliterated. And I think that's pretty bad, but it gets worse. Not only are the apostles liars, and the Bible and preaching of the Bible is worthless, but guess what else is worthless? Your faith. If Jesus did not rise from the dead, Christian faith is useless. Listen to verse 14 of our passage. If Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is, is in vain, and so is your faith. Verse 17 of our passage. If Christ has not been raised, then your faith is futile, useless, worthless. Christ's resurrection shows God's acceptance of his sacrifice, of his death on the cross. God's acceptance of that sacrifice. Without Christ's resurrection, God hasn't accepted Christ's sacrifice. And our faith in an unresurrected Christ will not produce forgiveness and salvation any more than faith in any other unresurrected person. You might as well believe in Buddha. If Christ wasn't resurrected, you might as well be just as good. You might as well believe in Muhammad or Allah. If Christ wasn't re resurrected, it's just the same. You might as well believe in one of the 33 million Hindu gods or the Native American pantheism. If Christ wasn't resurrected, they're all equally valid. You might as well put your hope in the saving power of your grandma, or your grandpa, or your cousin Eddie, or someone else, whoever it is. It's all the same. 
If Christ wasn't resurrected, your faith in him is pointless. If Jesus didn't come back to life, faith in him is wasted. So, your faith is useless. You've still got your sins. Without a resurrected Jesus, there's no forgiveness for sins. All people remain under the power and the condemnation of sin without his resurrection. Listen to verse 17 of our passage. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. There's no forgiveness of sin without a resurrected Savior. If Jesus was not resurrected, it was his own sin that he died for. He did not escape death's dark claws because he got what his sins deserved. And if he got what his sins deserved, he certainly cannot save anyone else, let alone hundreds, thousands, or millions of others, including you and me. Only a resurrected Savior has the authority to break the power of sin and free us. Only a resurrected Savior has God's divine stamp of approval. If Jesus wasn't resurrected, he has no power, no authority to save us, and we are left stuck in the mire of our sins. Just wait. It gets worse. If Jesus can't save us, no one can. You heard me right. If Jesus was not resurrected, then no one is saved. And all the dead people that you know, all the dead people that have died in years and years and centuries past, everyone who is not living on earth right now is dead and in hell. If there is no resurrection, there is no forgiveness. And without forgiveness, only sin and condemnation remain. All people who have ever walked the face of this planet, Christian and non-Christian alike, are left holding their guilt when they stand before the judgment throne. All the apostles are in hell. All the people of the Old Testament are in hell. All the people of the New Testament are in hell. Everyone is in hell because no one is saved without a resurrected Savior. And if he hasn't been resurrected, then everyone is in hell. Satan wins. God loses. If Jesus was not resurrected, then everybody who ever lived and walked the earth who has died are now living in eternal torment. All your loved ones, all your family members, without believers, unbelievers, whoever it is, without the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ, all people are condemned and damned to hell eternally. Tragic, horrific, terrible, unimaginable, pitiful. Paul goes on to say, all of all people, the most pitiful above anyone else on the face of the planet, if Christ has not been resurrected, the most pitiful people are Christians. Paul says it this way in our passage, if, Christ, if in Christ we have hope only in this life, if Christ only teaches us things in this life, if Christ only shows us how to walk in this life, teaches us how to live this life, if Christ only gives us hope for this life, we are, of all people, the most to be pitied. Christians come to Christ looking to find hope for the next life. All the benefits that come through Christ are first for the next life, and then all the consequences bleed back into this life. All the hope, all the uh, joy, all the peace of this life are because of what Christ does for us in the next life. But if Jesus has no hope to offer for the next life, then Christians have bet everything on a losing horse. They've mortgaged their house. They've pawned their family heirlooms. They've sold their jewelry and their cars. They've placed all their bet, all of their worldly possessions, all of their spiritual possessions, all of their, uh, it's their very soul, and they've placed their bet on a losing number. They put all their eggs in one basket, only to find that the bottom fell out. If Jesus didn't rise again, Christians have invested their whole lives in him for nothing. 
We lived our lives by eating to a lie. We bore the burden of obedience. We carried our cross daily. We sacrificed for his glory, only to find out in the end it was all a big waste. If Jesus hasn't been raised from the dead, we have lived a delusional life. Christians, in their self-inflicted, delusional, self-sacrificial living, have plundered their way through life into eternity of hell. Christians are the most pitiful of all people if Jesus has not been resurrected from the dead. Because Christians have given up everything, hoping for something that will never be. If the tomb was not empty, then your life is empty, without purpose, meaningless. But why have we gathered here today? What have we come to celebrate? What is it that we've come to celebrate? The tomb was empty. He is risen, right? That's what Easter is all about, an empty tomb. We know that the tomb was empty because over 500 witnesses confirmed it. That's why it has become a tradition in the church. And to remind each other of the fact that the tomb was empty, it's become a tradition, the Easter greeting has become a tradition to say, He is risen. He is risen indeed. And Paul reaffirms the resurrection in the final verse of our passage today, verse 20, when he says, In fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, meaning others will also be resurrected because of Christ's resurrection. Because Christ has resurrected from the dead, life has meaning. Your life has meaning, has value, has worth, has purpose. Since the tomb was empty, the Christian life is full of meaning and purpose. Since Christ has risen, many of the other things, all of the other things that we've just talked about have meaning and purpose. Since Christ has risen, Christian preaching is useful. It leads people to salvation. It motivates Christians on their faith journey. It equips saints to serve and to glorify their risen Lord and Savior. Since Christ has risen, the apostles were telling the truth. The Bible, then, is trustworthy and true and the final authority by God's own testimony. Since Christ has risen, the apostles were telling the truth and the hope that they offer through God's word through God's word is real. The hope of salvation is real. Since Christ has risen, the apostles were telling the truth, and God's final victory is assured. As you read through Revelation, you see his final victory, the final outcome. It's certain. It's going to happen. Since Christ has risen, your faith is meaningful and effective. Your life has meaning and purpose. Since Christ has risen, Christians are forgiven. We have hope. We have the assurance of salvation. Since Christ has risen, the dead Christians are in heaven. Christ has both the authority and the inclination to forgive Christians of their sins and to welcome them into heaven. Christians who have gone before us are not in hell. They are celebrating amazing, indescribable bliss that we can't even begin to imagine. Since Christ has risen, Christians are not pitiful people. In fact, they are to be envied above all others. Not because we're such handsome and pretty folk. Not because we're so smart. Not because we're so muscular. Because we are forgiven sinners. Because of his resurrection. We are the most enviable because we've had our sin removed from us. Christ's resurrection is not in question. The only question then that remains is whether you believe it or not. And the answer is not in your words, but in your response and how you live. If you believe that the tomb was empty, then your life will be filled to the brim and overflowing with meaning and purpose. And if you don't believe, then my friends, life is a meaningless and futile exercise. Now it's all that's left to do, if you believe, is to live out that faith each day, knowing in your heart that you serve a risen 
Savior. If Christ has risen, then nothing else matters. And if Christ has not risen, then nothing matters. You get that? If Christ has risen, nothing else matters. But if Christ has not risen, then nothing matters. So I say to you this morning, He has risen. He has risen indeed. Amen. Father, we thank you for raising Christ from the dead. And we thank you for giving us such assurance by allowing him to appear to more than 500 eyewitnesses, many of whom were tortured to death and would not betray that truth. Many who were threatened with death unless they would de deny his resurrection. And rather than deny the truth that they knew and saw with their own eyes, they willingly went to the torturous execution that they had planned for them. Father, we thank you for these witnesses. We know that Christ appeared and spoke with them for over 40 days. We know that people who aren't even Christians have recorded his resurrection in their writings of the time. People who were there, who, who didn't believe in him as Savior, who recorded his resurrection, and many of whom did believe in him as Savior, have recorded his resurrection. God, there is no doubt today as we celebrate Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, there is no doubt of the authenticity of his resurrection. And because of that, we have hope. We have more than hope. We have assurance. We have the confidence of knowing that he who rose is alive still, who is sitting by your side, who is advocating on our behalf, who is forgiving our sin, and who is leading us through life. Help us each day to live a life worthy of his sacrifice and of his resurrection, because it's that resurrection that gives us hope. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's uh, stand for the benediction, and then we'll sing our closing hymn, the December 77, Christ the Lord is risen today. We affirm our faith.